Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to demonstrate how I dye wool, mohair, and other animal fibers using my microwave oven. I'm going to be dyeing a warp and actually the weft yarn to weave with it. It's been a long time since I've done any wool warp dyeing and what I'm holding right now is actually one that I did back in I believe 1999. It's the result of a shoot to shock competition where we hand dyed the warp. The whole item here has been hand uh, spun and then hand woven. The yarn today though is commercial yarn. I'm going to show you how I do it nowadays using my microwave and uh, maybe it's a way that you might find interesting. There are many different ways out there so let's just check out one way, another way to dye some wool in a microwave oven. So what you see over here is my warp. Now this warp is about eight yards long. It is a blend of wool and silk and I also have some skeins of weft that I'm going to dye. So what I'm going to work first is I'm going to go over to my scale because the first thing I like to do before I actually get it wet is weigh it. I'm going to weigh each one separate. This is going to help me determine how much dye I need. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have it turned on. I'm going to put the warp on and let's see how much the warp weighs. All right, we have about a pound and a half of yarn. So I'm gonna use that in my estimates when I mix my dye and the weft. I think I have several skeins. And the weft is almost, well, it's 13 ounces, almost a pound. Now, I'm not sure if you can tell or not, but I like to weave with or warp with a heavier yarn and the weft happens to be a merino fingering weight yarn that is also super washed because I want them both to be able to be washed. This is going to be a shawl or a ruana. That's what I'm making with this particular yarn. So now we know how much it weighs and I'm going to use that in my calculations. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to soak this and it needs to uh, be soaked for at least 30 minutes. First of all, I'm just going to put all of the, uh, the skeins in. As you can see, obviously they're all un or unraveled, so to speak. And right now it's basically vinegar water. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, <laughs> and I almost forgot to do it. We have um, to add a cup of vinegar into the water. We have that in there. It's white vinegar, distilled vinegar. So that is the weft yarn. Now I'm going to also do the warp, and I do need to unbraid it's not really not a braid. I always think it's funny when people say braids. Now, if you want to have white areas, you might want to leave your ties in. I know this is where it's it's the idea like, oh my goodness, we're we're undoing things and it's going to be a tangled mess. Well, if you're if you're careful, it's not going to be a tangled mess. So we're going to put some in and. If you had actually wool that was 100% wool, you just want to squeeze gently when you press it in, or just press it in. You also want to make sure that it gets totally, totally wet. Now, if you notice, I actually have two warps because I'm going to dye them just a little bit differently to create a really interesting effect when I do weaving. And they are both exactly the same length. And again, I like to take the ties out. I really don't want any white areas in the middle. You do want to make sure that your yarn is totally wet. If it's not, there are going to be areas that are not going to get um, basically get dye in them. The other thing that you can also do, sometimes I do this and sometimes I don't, is you can also put in some synthropol. So right now, this yarn is pretty clean, or basically some kind of textile. So you can put a little synthropol in also, basically to pre-scour it. Now you can see now I have still need a little bit more water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more water to my mixture. Cover it up. And what I'll be doing is, while this is soaking, you do, like I said, every once in a while I want to come over and just kind of press it. You can even soak it overnight if you want to. 
And then what I will do is I'm going to be mixing up the dye while this is basically soaking up all the water. And you can turn it gently if you want to or just kind of make sure some of the areas get totally immersed and wet. If you don't want to use vinegar, you can also use citric acid. Just a little bit of the powder on that and I will double check on the amount that you would use for that. And I did uh, double check because I don't use citric acid very often. You can, or citric, yeah, it's a powder basically. So if you would like to do, use that, you would use two tablespoons per gallon of water. In this case, as you can see, I often use distilled white vinegar and also a synthropol or some kind of a textile mix. I did decide to add a little bit of that to the water. I kind of pushed everything aside. So it's soaking right now. The next step, we are going to mix some dye. Now let's talk about dyes. These are acid dyes. Now there are two companies many people use. There's also a third company called Gay Wool. I often use Dharma acid dyes and they also sell a Jacquard, another brand. So I use that. You can see I use those a lot. Today though, I'm going to use some dye from ProChem. So today, or for this video, we're going to use Colonial Blue, Chestnut, and a blue spruce. I'm going to combine those together. And what I have already set up here, I have my uh, mason jars. I like to use mason jars. They have measurements on the side so you can uh, see how much water you're putting in them. And then I have some hot water. Sometimes you'll see boiling water, sometimes just very, very hot water. And I'm going to be using a teaspoon as my measurement. I'm going to get started momentarily. I'm going to get some other things set up here and we're going to next move into mixing the dye. And the way I work is probably not as scientific as some other people. So if you are someone who keeps records and details and very exact in whatever you do, you might want to stop watching right now. First of all, I'm going to mix up. Oh, I do have my rubber gloves on. Now you notice they're two different colors. Uh, sometimes they do get holes in them. If you don't wear them, your hands are going to probably look this color, maybe a rainbow color. One of the things that I often do is I shake the dye before I use it. Good to get it going. The only thing is sometimes when you shake the dye and you open it up right away, you get this little powder, a little kind of a smoky looking thing, and you want to make sure you don't breathe that in. Some people wear uh, eye protection and also masks. And in this particular case, it didn't really, didn't happen. Now, if I've already decided that I have one and a half pounds, I'm going to start with doing one teaspoon of dye to get started. Try to do a level teaspoon. I'm gonna mix that in there. I also like to keep everything covered. I don't wanna get any moisture in these uh, in the dye and then I have some very hot water here I'm going to use about a quarter of a cup just to get started what I also find fascinating about dyes are you put them in and sometimes the color you see is not necessarily the color that you're expecting this happens to be colonial blue and it is turning a little blue now some people use more of a paste I just want to make sure that I really get this dissolved. So I'm look using, I'm also using something that's plastic. Don't want to use wood. Made that mistake one time. The wood does die. It soaks up the, uh, the coloring, especially if you're doing cold water or plant fibers. So I'm looking in there and I can see it's still a little bit of dye needs to be stirred. I'm going to stir all of that. I can still see a couple little hunks. If you're having some trouble with the dye dissolving, some people add a little bit of um, vinegar, not vinegar, uh, some alcohol. And also sometimes I believe I've read that people can use synthropol or something else. I don't normally do that. All right, we have enough there. I'm gonna add some more water. This is also hot water. I'm looking for at least about a cup I'm looking on the side here, we have about a cup, and that's what I need now. 
I prefer to mix a little bit at a time, and if I need more, then I'll mix more. So we have the Colonial Blue done. I'm gonna do the same procedure for each of the other. And I also, sometimes, I like to add another slurp of vinegar. Just a little slurp. I can also mix these up ahead of time and make sure they really dissolve. I'm going to do the same procedure with the other two colors and we'll be back. Now the yarn has been soaking for 30 minutes so I'm going to be already started. I'm going to take it out and I am going to, uh, this is the, the uh, one part one chain, I'm going to spread it out. I have some plastic laid out here. I'm going to spread it out in sections that work for me and I'll talk about that after I do that. But I just want to let you see what I'm going to be doing. And the plan is to squeeze out as much water as you can. Now I don't have my gloves on right now, but basically I'm just going to take, this is vinegar water, I'm going to squeeze out just a little bit enough, but I still want it to be a little damp. You don't want it to be drippy. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that next, spread it all out, and then we'll talk a little bit about how we decide where we're going to put the color. So here we are, the warp, two of them are all spread out. And like I said, they still have some water in them. You just want to be gentle now. This is super wash wool. If you were using 100% wool, 100% alpaca, whatever it would be, you don't want to probably agitate it too much, but it's okay to move it around. Now, I don't have this exactly maybe like perfect because I'm not painting. I'm going to be pouring the dye on and gently squeezing it. Like I said, I actually have, uh, there's actually four warps here because I'm going to be uh, doing something a little different with each one. So technically, I'm going to keep this one a little separate, but I'm going to dye them almost as one section. That's what I've decided to do. You can decide if you want, if you have long enough table or area, you can arch it. You can do uh, several different, like a rainbow color, a lot of them. I'm using three colors today. It just happens to be what I like to do, formula-wise. The dye has been mixed. If I do need more, I can mix up a little bit more. But believe it or not, a little goes a long way. Now this is the uh, spruce, I believe. I'm gonna pour a little bit on there. And I'm just going to gently, it's going to wick through there. And I'm going to press it in, just gently. I'm going to do three sections on this one. Again, just gently pressing it in. It, it does start, and I, as you can see, I'm moving it around so I can see both sides. I'm going to make sure that the dye goes through the yarn and it will start to see even the soap. I didn't rinse out the synthropol. That also will help. Now right now it's starting to go over there. I don't want it over there yet. You can also what I call make little mountains in between. So I could put a little, a little piece of plastic through here. A little bit there. And do a little bit more. Again, I'm just pressing it in gently. If you want more control, you can use things that are uh, thickeners. You can add that to your dye. And maybe if I did want a little bit of white, I could allow that to be, but in what I do, I prefer not to have any sections that are white. If I did, I would have tied that in. The other thing, it's okay for me to have sections that are dark and light. I'm not into something solid. I want things to be different shades. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to use some of the chestnut next. I'm going to start kind of in the middle here with the chestnut. Start to just gently press it. Kind of looks purpley right now, doesn't it? That's the other thing about dyes. You mix them up and you're like, really? Is that going to really be when I think it's going to be? And once in a while you pick up the wrong one and you do end up with a color you didn't expect. So this is how I do the dye. Nothing scientific. Just kind of a 
So what I'll do is the next section. I want the other warp to have some color in it, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. I'm going to do more, uh, again, this is all going to be chestnut, and the other end is going to be the colonial blue. So what I'm going to do with this one, though, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to do a little bit of chestnut here. And in this case, just a little bit there, I'm going to kind of make my markers where I want the colors now. And I'm going to do a little bit of chestnut here, a little bit here, and a little bit here. And squeeze that in because each one, they're going to be side by side when I'm done, kind of like I did the work for the sheep to shock competition. And I do have another layer of plastic here. I'm going to be rolling all of this up in. All right, I'm going to pause there and then I'm going to continue with the process and then you will see what it looks like right before. I'm ready for the next step. So like I said, these are eight yard warps. If you did a four yard or a two yard or something shorter, you can kind of guess and decide where you want your color. This is one of the ways that I found out not, not having too short of sections, not having too many colors, just seemed to work best for the, when I do my designing. Now, as you see, I'm going to roll this one and wrap that one up one a little bit in this direction. And I'm going to take the plastic on this side and I'm going to roll this one. Now it might be quite a while before we see the end results. I have a lot of other warps that are waiting in the wings. I basically don't want to have the die to roll into each other. <laughs> so now I'm going to take this, it's kind of hard to roll it on top of plastic, but now I'm going to roll it. Now the first time I did this, I did this very similar in a similar situation, but instead of putting it into plastic, I have a very nice heavy duty plastic, I had some hot water boiling and I actually steamed it in a big steamer. So now it's all ready. The next step is, as you can see back in the corner there, we'll see in a moment, I have my microwave. And that's where we're going next with it.